I'll guarantee you there's no curriculum out there that will teach reading proficiently unless you have teachers who understand the developmental stages of reading and how to teach in those stages. And we just, teachers coming out of uh, colleges of education by and large don't have that knowledge because frankly there are not enough classes required of them. And I'll talk about some policy things that we've done to change that in Minnesota. Um, and, and hopefully within a year or two time, we'll see the results. So again, 95% of kids are instructional casualties. They just haven't been taught how to read. Never been taught, MBT we call them. And we know that we can take, you know, two, about two to 6% of the kids, we know that they can't learn to read fluently. What do we do for those kids? How do, we have, how do we handle them? Do we just, just limit them in life? Yeah, assistive technology. Books on tape, speech, uh, text-to-speech software and hardware. And there are many executives around this country who have very good um, assistants who actually do a lot of the... The mechanical work, um, but it, it is not, if a, a child has a reading problem, it is not a function of uh, cognitive disability. Okay, if he's a classic dyslexic kid who can't pull the printed word off the page, it is no reflection of how smart he is. And I, I gave you this statistic. The problem with this statistic in our schools. And this presupposes that we have really good instruction in the schools, and that's a big assumption, I think. Um, but the problem with this is that the way we identify kids now to get special services is that there has to be a, a, a certain gap between their potential, their IQ, and where they're actually functioning in school. And that gap generally is about two years. So it, if you just start in school, kindergarten, first, second grade, you haven't had enough time yet to grow the gap big enough to get identified. So by the end of third grade, when you still haven't been identified because you hear the common refrain that parents come to me with, is that my teacher just said, wait, it's a maturity issue. The light bulb will go on. Don't stigmatize the child. And that's exactly the wrong approach statistically. So the great reading debate that's raged for 50 plus years is one of whole language versus phonics. And the whole language approach, um, the belief is that we acquire, children acquire reading skills much as they acquire oral language skills. And how do kids develop oral language? Exposure. Exposure. Yeah, there's not a lot of direct instruction in acquiring vocabulary words. It's through exposure. And there's something like 10 to 12 times a child has to be exposed to a word in a meaningful context for him to have that word. Um, so that's the way we acquire oral language. The true purist in the whole language camp say that reading is the same way. Just, and this is how they, they teach it. They get a big book and they read the book to the child, I was walking, pointing to the words, what did you see? And they're much more skilled at holding it up for the audience to see. Um, but they repeat and they do it over and over and over again. And the thought is that the child starts to internalize and generalize what uh, words are and the sounds within words and the letters that make those sounds. So the purist, um, there's very little direct instruction in reading because it interrupts the child-centered activity that it has to be. Okay, phonics, on the other hand, the simple sound people in that camp are, are known as drill and kill. They, they just practice letters and the sounds that they make and uh, to, to the child's bored to tears. So the truth is it's somewhere in between those two extremes. But if I had to pick an extreme, I would pick the phonics extreme every single time. Um, but we know it's not just phonics. Okay, so moving into the, now we're going to move into the five strands. 
So what happened uh, about 1996-7, uh, Congress got together and said, you know, we have a real issue with literacy in this country. Uh, they formed a pa panel of reading experts. It's called the National Reading Panel. And in 2001, so the panel got together and reviewed research from, uh, <coughs> independent research from around the English-speaking world about how kids acquire reading skills and what best practices should be. So they reviewed over 100,000 uh, research studies and came up, I should have brought, I have the book downstairs. It's, um, it's about four or 500 page book from the National Reading Panel. Actually, you can uh, go on to the National Reading or the government reading site and they'll send it to you for free. It's good reading if you're an insomniac. Um, <laughs> but they did come up with uh, five areas that, of reading that really have to be addressed. And they have to be addressed, again, you're gonna hear this over and over from me tonight, it has to, these areas have to be addressed, addressed directly, or in other words, explicitly, sequentially, okay, and in a very structured, systematic way. So phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension. So phonemic awareness, I'm going to wheel this. Can everybody, can everybody see that sort of here? I mean, I'll work off the top, so you should be able to see it. So phonemic awareness literally is, for me asking the child who's six years old, hey, Billy, how many sounds in the word cat? How many sounds are there in cat? Don't be shy. Three. K at. Okay, if a child can't do that, if he can't at, at you know, middle of first grade, beginning to middle of first grade, if he can't segment those three sounds, we know he's going to have a difficulty with reading. Because there's no way, if he can't distinct, distinguish three sounds in cat, how can he possibly put C, A, and T over those sounds to represent them, you know, in writing? to see them on the page. So for, for children, and then you know we do other things with kids like, um, what is cowboy without cow? Boy. Okay, so th that's another phonemic awareness exercise. So we'll do a lot of exercises with kids like that to discern whether they have difficulty with that. There's some assessments that we can do as well. And this is often, not always, but often the it is the foundational skill of learning to read, and it's often here where kids break down. And we automatically jump to phonics, to symbol sound, and if we don't have the sound part down, the symbol sound doesn't make a lot of sense. So how do we remediate something like that? Well, what we would literally do, we do a couple of different things. So I would say to a child, Billy, this is the sound. Can you show me k? So he would pull it down. I'm not saying anything about a letter. I'm just saying sounds. I said, can you show me k? So he'll pull it down and say k. And I'll say, great. I'll say, Billy, this is the a ah sound. Can you show me the a ah sound? So he'll pull this down and say a. Ah. And I'll say, great. I'll say, Billy, this is the t sound. Can you show me the I mean, t sound. So I'll bring this down and say t. So then I'll say, um, Billy, can you show me cat? And I can't remember which the k sound was. <laughs> Red, blue? So blue, k, a, t, cat. So I'll say, okay, that's great, Billy. You just showed me cat. Can you show me tack? So I want Billy to go. A, uh, k, tack. So we'll play around with this a lot. Maybe I'll show him this and say, this is ah. Uh. Can you show me talk? You know, and he go, t, ah, uh, k. So we'll, we'll, play with, we'll play with sounds. And as he gets better, we might only start with, well, we're, we're only starting with one sound, right? And we may just do at and ack. And then we'll layer the third sound on, and then maybe we'll layer a blend, 
like blat, B-L-A-T. But again, we're not using letters. We're just using sounds. Yep. Would that work for substitution deletion, or is that too ahead without it? No, you could do it. with. And what uh, that would be maybe one step ahead. So what we mean by the question was, um, would this work for substitution and deletion? So if, if the child has learned a few letters and you have, uh, let's just say this is cat, and um, this is I sound. So we're going to do a substitution. We'll say, Billy, you've got cat. We want kit. So Billy's going to go up here and find the 